Mixland has just released their new plugin, as far as I know their second plugin. I've reviewed the first one called Rubber Band, it's uh, over here. Uh, this one is called Tilt, I've got early access to it and uh, we're going to take a look at it right now. So because I have early access, I do not have access to the website. However, I do have access to the press release text, which basically is kind of the same thing as on the website. It's called Tilt and this is it. It's all about being in balance, which is really interesting and actually really important if you work in a creative industry. I think what it is, is that it's, it's a Tilt EQ. So uh, what that would do, there is actually a uh, setting in FabFilter that does that as well. As soon as you boost up the highs, it will also cut the lows a little bit and the other way around. So working like that. And that is actually really interesting because I've been thinking about this thing. Like EQing is a lot about the balance in the spectrum. And when you're lacking high frequencies, that doesn't necessarily mean that you need more high frequencies. It also means that you need less low frequencies. And tilting is then kind of an interesting solution because you're doing both. Uh, on the other hand, it's not always needed, of course. Sometimes it's really like you just need to cut the lows or add the high frequencies. Now, what's the scoop? <laughs> That's uh, press release terms for, for what is happening. Um, so basically, Mixland and Kaiv Audio have joined forces again for another plugin. Powerful plugin. I'll decide it myself. Tilt, powerful passive tilt shelving EQ with adjustable vacuum tube output stage. Vacuum tube output stage. Vacuum tube output stage. I didn't knew there were vacuum tubes in my Mac Mini. And if there were, I mean, it's a pretty small computer. So, okay. Plugin is inspired by classic modern pieces of tube equipment. Oh, maybe that's what they mean. And I think the tube stage is then inspired by that. Because are there any analog tilt things? I mean, it's, it wouldn't be really hard to make because you can, in analog, you can just get a potentiometer with multiple gangs or bands. What, what are they called again? I actually made a stereo EQ where I used that uh, same technique where I, I used a potentiometer with multiple... Well, it's actually one shaft which controls multiple potentiometers. Uh, and when you do that and connect your low frequencies the other way around, of course, if the circuit does support it, then when you are boosting, uh, you're cutting on the other. So, so it shouldn't be very difficult to make on an analog design. I should actually I think I can modify one of my own EQs to do that. I'm not sure if I want to do that, but it could be possible. Well, let's, uh, let's take a look at it because I do have the plugin over here of course and uh, this is it it's a kind of a three-dimensional interface because we have shadows and that kind of stuff it actually feels as if it's a glossy glossy plate gl glossy front plate i do like the color actually uh, so we have grit over here oh yeah of course and with the grit we're getting way more light out of the tubes than tubes are normally giving i mean most tubes like those tubes that we're using for small signal uh, audio they don't really glow that much. It's just the heater that is glowing. Over here you're also seeing a little bit of blue glow, which is usually caused by... It's, it's not the heater that is causing it. That's really... Um, how do you explain it? I actually don't really know it anymore, but the blue glow is, is something else. Uh, anyway, uh, if we turn the grid all the way down, it's still glowing a little bit, what it seems like. So, yeah, gimmicky, really gimmicky. So we have tilt over here. We can't adjust it like this. Uh, let's link it. Oh, yeah, okay. Well, at least they did a lot of work on the visuals. 40 kilohertz! 40 kilohertz, that's for the bat. What? I'm running at 48. It can't do 40. It cannot do 40. We're going to investigate that. How is it going to do 40? 40 can be, of course, your frequency, and then the shelf has like a long slope towards 20. Maybe that's it. I don't know. What we need to do is, of course, run our test track through it. And the test track, as always, is <laughs> Sandstorm by... <laughs> how, long, <laughs> how long can I keep this joke up? <laughs> I don't actually know if, uh, if, if Darut actually approves uh, with this message. Maybe, maybe he's just pissed every time he's watching this. I, I don't know. Anyway, it's called Sandstorm by Darut. And maybe this is a meme we need to kill soon. I don't know. Uh, anyway, let's test it. Hey, 
Um, so there's no bypass in here. So we need to put the ugly bypass from Reaper over here. Just a little bit. Actually, there's a little bit of EQing as well, I think. Uh, let's do a reasonable 208k. Oh, that does give us a bit more level. So the ratios are a bit weird on this. So. So something weird happens, seems to happen with the levels. Like, this sounds louder, but my level is actually lower. And this gives me a lot more level, but like a lot, like we're at minus three or something. Well, this is at minus 12 and it's not necessarily that it's, it's like sounding a lot louder because of course we're changing the frequency spectrum and that kind of stuff. So Love's measurement would probably give a different result. I don't know. From an engineering perspective, if you are like, if you really need to tilt a lot, I'm probably overdoing it as well, but if you really need to tilt a lot, you always also need a little bit of gain adjustment then, and it's not in the plugin. That that's a bit like why not make a tiny somewhere, a tiny, or maybe make make the interface a bit bigger and just have an input output gain or just an output gain or whatever. That's like the, the, those utility features, like like the bar in FabFilter, like the bottom bar always has those utility things in there with the bypass, with the uh, input gain, output gain, panning, that kind of stuff. Like just make it in there. That's just like because now I do need to insert something afterwards, or maybe I do need to insert something before the plugin so I can gain down that kind of stuff. It just makes the workflow harder. And what I'd never understand with plugins like these, these are very specific things. Like it's it's not about like like a whole circus of features it's like like a few small things that it can do and it can do them very well but the reason why people buy plugins like these is is mainly workflow because it can create a result pretty quickly uh, a very specific result but it can do it however if you're not building in those utility features it's not that easy to use anymore so I don't get it, but maybe, of course, I, I'm drawing a lot of conclusions about like what this plugin is for and that kind of stuff, but th this is just from, from how I'm looking at it. It's kind of weird. Like, like, what is your goal? What is, what is, what is your goal? Like, I don't really understand that. Let's, uh, 20 Hertz. Again, I think this is also with a slope and 40 kilohertz. I just want to see if this thing can bring down my ceiling or maybe dust off my ceiling. I mean, speakers are able to do it, but yeah. It really does. Yeah, it... It does something. Also the 40K. Like, let's unlink it. Let's reset that one. Yeah, so that that can only that can only literally only mean that it's it's like a a, a very long slope uh, into the hearable range. Probably three or six decibels per octave. An octave below 40k is already 20k. So of course it creates a very smooth slope. Maybe Dan Whirl can do a more technical video about like cramping that is happening and also like why this is possible, like doing a 40k high frequency band on a 40 kilohertz sample rate that I'm running over here because I don't fully understand that. So Dan Whirl, I don't know if you're available. I would love to hear how something would work in a plugin like this. All right, grit. Let's, uh, let's play with that a little bit. 
It are, it's already doing so much when you're just... Oh! Wow. Gain compensation is very good on this. This is, this is like very well gain compensated. I can actually see it compensating on my metering, yeah. Also cool that it's of course after the EQ. So you can indeed just boost a bit of lows into that grid. All right. I do like the, um, the choices that it's giving me. Like, like it really goes from subtle and, and nice to uh, nice to listen to all the way up to like smoking out a tape machine. I, d I don't know how to describe it. Now there's one more thing that I quickly want to check because uh, I'm a bit confused by it, maybe. Just a sanity check for myself, this. I just quickly want to check if it's already distorting with the grid all the way down to... Um, to zero because I've, something is happening as soon as I enable it. Let me check. Now it's gridding, of course. There is some aliasing happening when I turn it up all the way. And this is why we need so much oversampling. I, I don't know if this plugin is oversampling. I cannot like enable or disable it, so I cannot compare it. But um, this already shows a lot of aliasing, uh, which is, of course, on program material. It, it, it could be way worse. Um, but it's weird because it feels like the plugin is doing something when it's all the way down, but there isn't, as far as I can see now. I don't know if it's like already doing something over here, so... Ah! Ah! That's weird. So it's not... Like, I'm double-clicking on it. And it's... Is it... <laughs> It's doing a little bit of a boost on both pads. Yeah. Look at this. So it's changing my spectrum, even if I'm... Ah. So so when, it's, when the plugin is completely zeroed in, there is, as far as I can measure, no saturation. Like the saturation only really starts at like the second bar or something on sine waves. But when I measure with pink noise uh, with bypassed and enabled, it's already doing something. Which really annoys me. Like when I insert a plugin on neutral settings, it should not do anything. I don't like that. Why isn't it just neutral when it's on neutral? Like it should be neutral, if you ask me. So that's, that's snake oilish. That's snake oilish. It's really, I, I don't know if it's done on purpose or not. It's really unnecessary. It's kind of weird, like, yeah, you would expect this thing to just not do anything until you start turning something like grid all the way down, like that kind of stuff, so that the user is actually in control. So I, so I don't know why, why they're doing this, uh, but that makes it kind of snake oil. Of course, the interface is a little bit snake oil. There's no utility in there, which is also like, why? Just make gaining just a few things like uh, why so it's it's a very very basic plugin however what i did see in the press release is that it uh, does come uh, at a very uh, basic price as well so like in that context it's it it only costs 30 dollars do they do trials let's see if you can get a trial from rubber band oh my you can't get trials over here i'm sorry why? I want to try plugins. We do not offer demos at this point. We price at a very low risk price and we promise they are of the highest quality. Well, if you're doing that, please add a refund policy then. Like if there's no trial, refund policy. If I buy something, gear from, for in my racks, I can return it within 14 days. And this plugin, now people should buy it. Okay, uh, I've made my conclusion. For me, this is snake oil. Like, at least give people a, a trial to try out or something, like, or, or a refund policy or whatever. Because, no, no, I don't, um, 
I don't like that. Plugin itself, it's on the cool side. The sum of all these small things for me makes it snake oil. So um, yeah, le let me know what you think in the comments down below. I, I don't even think I'm going to link to Mixland. Why should I link in the description so you can check it out yourself, but you can't really check it out yourself. You know, go to Mixland.io. I'm not even going to link. I mean, why? Because so they can take your money and you're not satisfied with a plugin or probably not satisfied or whatever. You couldn't even have tried it. No, I'm not going to do that. So uh, no, no. Leave a comment down below. Let me know. And uh, yeah, that's it. Uh, disclosure, well, I think it's clear enough. Um, they did send me the press kit. I don't think they're going to send me another press kit after this video, but that's completely up to them. They don't know that I'm making this video. Uh, I just received the press kit. I didn't even reply to the email. Uh, they don't know that I'm making this video, uh, all that kind of stuff, but that should be clear from the content. <laughs> if you like my independence and want to support me, make sure to do that by uh, using the links down below. Uh, the affiliate link is really cool. Using the affiliate link, you can buy something and then uh, have a little bit of your purchase price, a little bit of what you've paid for your purchase, getting kicked to me and in that way you're supporting me. So it's not costing you anything extra, you're not paying anything extra for your purchase, but you are helping YC Studio. Another way to support me is by pledging a bit to my Patreon campaign, which I'm going to link over here. And on Patreon, you get early access to videos. I'm going to record a Q&A right now for Patreon. So uh, check it out, it's all on Patreon over here. The last way to support me and the whole YouTube channel is by watching more videos. So I'll link one of my videos over here, but YouTube will do its best to recommend other videos for you around my video. I want to thank you all for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, keep pushing, and bye-bye.